In this video, I'm checking out the Warm Audio WA47. It's a take on one of the most iconic and sought after tube microphones of all time, the Neumann U47. Obviously, this piqued my interest, and so I wanted to look at it from a pragmatic point of view. And inevitably, the question, but does it sound as good as an original Neumann U47? will be asked, and to be honest, to those people I say, I don't care and neither should you. I mean, let's be honest, it's not as if you're hanging out on reverb with a Warm Audio WA47 and a vintage U47 in your basket on a knife edge, deciding which one to buy. All I care about is, does it sound good? Does it give me a different vibe to my other microphones? Is it well built? And then is it good value for money? Before we jump in, I need to ask a favor of you. If you could hit that subscribe button, that would seriously make my day. I'm making a push to 80,000 subscribers, so honestly, it just, it would mean the world to me. Thank you in advance. And I've also timestamped everything in this video, so you can just skip around and um, skip to the bit you want. This video is unsponsored, but is made possible by my Patreon backers. And the way that works is any funds from Patreon, any budget, I buy gear, I do an unbiased review, and then I give the gear to my backers via a giveaway. If that's of interest, it really is just a great way to support the channel, and it's linked below, you can check it out there. In this case, I bought this warm audio mic with my own cash, so this is not a, a giveaway item. Um, so just to, to, to kind of go over that. And now let's go into the features of the WA-47. Well, let's start with the capsule, as that is where the vast majority of a microphone's tone comes from. Warm audio say the WA-47's capsule closely resembles the original K47 capsule found in the Neumann U47. Now people are understandably skeptical, to put it politely, when companies make these kind of claims. The capsule is made in Australia and is gold sputtered, has a dual large diaphragm, dual backplate and six micron thick mylar film. All of these things contribute to the frequency response of a microphone and those specs I just mentioned are remarkably similar to that of the original K47 capsule. I don't have a vintage U47, Kel Surprise, right? But remember, I don't care that it sounds similar or not, but I'm convinced it probably does. But also let's bear in mind that, you know, that one vintage U47 probably sounds pretty different to another vintage E47. In fact, I, I know that's the case. Also bear in mind, this kind of capsule, this style is not rare. You can go and buy these. A member of the public could just go and buy this style of capsule and conceivably make a mic that would have a, you know, in the ballpark frequency response. But people will still doubt. And to them, I just have two words, Jim Lil. And if you've seen Jim Lil's video about where a microphone's tone comes from, largely the capsule, then that's the end of the argument. And if you still disagree after watching, I can only assume that you've already spent lots of cash on a U47 style microphone and you're looking for some kind of validation. Well, you know, uh, that's not what I'm here for and you won't get that from me. You know, minor, uh, differences in tone aside, I think it's, it's my opinion that vintage Neumann U47s are sickeningly appalling value. And I know that's just down to rarity because they made something like just 6,000 of the originals. And you know what? I don't even know whether the Warm Audio WA47 is good value, but you know, we'll see. On top of all that, it's all completely subjective. We seem to be kind of hardwired to believe that a vintage U47 costing five figures is going to sound better than a microphone that's based on that, and it, which is sub $1,000. But think how crazy that is. Better according to what? There's nothing factual about that statement. In fact, the only thing that you could say which is factual is that you know, they, they, one doesn't sound better than the other. So throughout this video and in the comments, let's not jumble fact and opinion and I will do the same. Of course, this is a tube based circuit. And what does that mean for the sound? Well, in theory, it should sort of bloom the sound a little bit and add just, a, you know, a minute amount of harmonic distortion. In practice, in reality, we now know that the difference is you know, very slight, again, 
Thank you, Jim Lil. You can switch between Omni, Cardioid, and Figure of Eight Polar Patterns on the power unit. Plus there are a few in between positions that are mixes of those. Like the U47, there's no low cut switch and no pad. I know Warm Audio are just being faithful to the original kind of design, but I think this is where there was room for improvement, you know, because because it's not 1949. Moving on now to build quality and other than the microphone itself, you get a box, the power unit and cable, the seven pin cable that's needed for tube mics, a decent shock mount, plus a couple of spare bits of elastic. The box honestly is not good. The very first time I opened it, the padding panel under the lid was loose and the material comes away easily. So, you know, pretty bad. There's no flight case, which would have been nice, but you know, that doesn't really bother me because I'm using this mic almost exclusively in my home studio here. But really what would have been good is something like this uh, dust cover, which is dusty as it should be. Um, and this came with my AKG C414 um, because sometimes, you know, I want to throw it on a stand and I want to leave it there. I, I don't want to pack it all away every time. I just want to stick it up on there and not worry about dust getting in and that kind of thing. And because I want it, might want to come back the next day and do something else. The microphone itself feels large and sturdy and heavy. The housing is made from nickel plated brass and this has a nice matte finish. It's made in China. I feel like Warm Audio downplayed this uh, or uh, omitted completely in their marketing. And I, I, I suppose it's just because um, that might bother some people. It doesn't bother me. The thing is the components used are all really high quality and Warm Audio definitely don't downplay the American made AMI transformer or high end capacitors. They also make a pretty big fuss about the Gotham cable, which guys, not exciting. Look, I don't believe in cables giving a tonal advantage. I, I'm sorry, I just don't. However, I do expect them to be well made, certainly as well made as cables that I've made myself, which this seems to be. So as far as I'm concerned, Warm Audio have met my minimum requirements for a microphone cable. Next onto the user experience, and it's definitely a little bit more fuss compared to a non tube microphone, because obviously you've got this power unit, you've got a different kind of cable. If you've packed it all away, it's just more to get out. That's all I'm saying. Um, I mentioned that this is a heavy microphone. Well, it's actually too heavy for the Rode desk mount arm, and I'm using the fancier PSA One Plus version. So forget using it that way, you will need a sturdy microphone stand. The experience of the box obviously was not great, and I have since glued the this panel back into place, but I shouldn't have to do that. In use, I was surprised by the slightly higher perceived output compared to some of my other microphones. Not a complaint at all. Uh, I was just, it's just noteworthy. Now I'm sure what you're all wondering is how does this sound? Well, let me show you. Well, here we go. This was my first instinct. I wanted to see how it sounded on my voice. You know, it's, it's what the mic is known for. And so I've got the WA47 set up really close. It is maybe five inches away, but I've got it sort of off access a little bit just because um, I didn't want to risk any kind of plosives and I didn't want to have a, a big, you know, pop screen in the shot. So yeah, what do you think? I, I haven't used any kind of compression or EQ on the way in, which is the way that I prefer to record normally. Um, and I have already tried it with the EQ and compression and dear God, it sounds epic. Anyway, let's switch over now to uh, a, a small diaphragm mic. Why not? Just to get some contrast. Well, here we go. Now I've got the WA84 from Warm Audio, which is a small diaphragm condenser mic based on the Neumann KM84. And uh, I like this mic. I like it for voiceover work. It's definitely going to have more detail on the top end, which you know, human beings, we tend to gravitate towards that as our preference. But then people talk so fondly and, uh, you know, and it's so herald heralded to have warmth in your recording. So, you know, w which is it? Do you like the WA48 with its rich bass and warmth or this with its detail? Let me know. Next, I wanted to see how it performed whilst recording acoustic guitar. 
Here's the WA-47 and then I'll switch to a small diaphragm condenser just to compare. Switching to Warm Audio's WA84 mic that I reviewed previously. And then I wanted to see what it sounded like when I layered up a couple of tracks using the WA-47. So here is double tracks with a little melody down the middle, still absolutely no EQ or compression. I ran off the frequency response charts for these, yet I know it's not scientific, the sources are not the same. So, um, you know, take it with a pinch of salt, they're just there in case you're interested to see them. Ah, oh, so just to, to quickly brain dump my thoughts on the way that it sounds, and I had the same reaction that a lot of people have when they first hear this microphone, and that was just, wow, that low end is just so thick and, chocolatey I think I said which you know ridiculous I know and the um and the top end is kind of um it's not airy it's sort of rolled off and silky uh and classy those are the words that sprang to mind I especially like this microphone on my own voice for voiceover work I found that it it doesn't react that that well with um high SPL sources and particularly not you know uh plosives uh, from from voice work, it it kind of becomes a bit, for want of a better word, farty. Anyway, I'm impressed overall, and it's actually going to take over the main duties for capturing audio for this talking headshot. In fact, I've been using it all along since the beginning of the video. It's just here. Moving on to value for money and alternatives, and starting with the value side of things, I I've seen that you can buy this style of capsule, not this exact one, but you know, K47 style capsules for around $300 US. And I think when you start factoring in the other costs, like the materials, the labor, the parts, the taxes, all of that kind of stuff, this starts to look like a pretty insane bargain, especially when you consider how wonderfully it captures audio. As for alternatives, there are so many 47 style microphones out there, so I've just cherry-picked a few of what I think are the most uh, intriguing, and um, I'll, I'll link a load below for you. First up, we have the Audio-Technica AT4047 SV. I have such a soft spot for Audio-Technica. I've owned a few in the past and absolutely love them. This is slightly lower priced compared to the WA-47. Apparently it's not as characterful sounding, but it's still bound to be fantastic. Then we have the Telefunken TF-47. It's a premium option at more than double the price of the Warm. It's likely better built because that's the reputation of Telefunken, but better sounding? Well, remember, we're not doing that but I've read that it sounds great, but slightly brighter. Then there's the Slate ML1 and UAD Sphere series of microphones that model the frequency response of a selection of different mics, including the U47. Both of these do a similar job, have been quite well received and are cheaper than the WA47. I'm intrigued. Next onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Let's do it. This thing sounds so good, so classy, rich, 
silky, you know, I, I'm running out of words. And I know that's really just subjective, so take it with a pinch of salt. That's just my opinion. But I'm confident that most people who hear this microphone are gonna be blown away. It's built like a tank. I've got no doubt that this thing is gonna be able to take a beating and should be a workhorse in the studio. Warm Audio have chosen great components throughout. We're talking a really good capsule and quality transformer and capacitors. The ingredients are right. I'd also say this is a true bargain, particularly if you can get it either used or on a Black Friday deal like I did. I'll add that whenever I've used this, I've had to do very little for it to be sounding kind of finished, just because it sounds very polished. So if warmth is what you're looking for, this is gonna be good for your workflow. And onto the cons, and this lacks modern features like a pad and a low cut. And I know that there are gonna be people out there that hate that idea because, you know, it's in some way muddying the circuit or would be messing up the vintage tone. But I say these would be useful tools to have. I found it not great for high SPL sources. Make sure you've got a really good pop filter when using this with vocals. The box, you know, it looks cool, but it's actually pretty terrible. It's missing a dust cover, and for me, that would have been really nice far more useful than the flimsy box it came in. This thing is really heavy, way too much for most desk mount boom arms. So your best mic stand at the ready, preferably one with a counterweight. At this price, I have to wonder about its longevity, regardless of how well it feels right now. And I suppose time will tell. Finally, to my opinion, and it's rare in these videos for me to have more cons than pros and then go on to rave about a product. But rave I must, because this is one glorious sounding microphone. Other than that, I'm not sure what else I can say other than what I said in my pros and cons. Look, this is not a perfect product, nothing is, but you know, it's phenomenal in the one area that really matters, and that's sound quality. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this video interesting, helpful, and I suppose most, most importantly, entertaining, because that's what these videos are for. What did I miss? I wanna hear from you. Do you agree? Let me know, I'm always in the comments uh, as much as I can be anyway. I've now made hundreds of videos about audio and video, of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next, and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.